Hey guys, this is Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living in your aquarium in the middle of the night. And we're going to sneak up on some Stiphodons, which are a really fun little goby species. I happen to get all of them from Aquatic Arts, uh, and you too can. They always have quite a few species lately, and uh, you can uh, get a discount code of 15% off in the, in the uh, link below. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is what these guys do at night. And you see that there's all this algae on the glass. Well, that's intentional. These guys need to graze on biofilm and algae. That's really what they eat. That's how they bulk up. And I've got uh, 16 in this 20 long, which is a lot. You also need good running, flowing water. Uh, a power head may not even be a bad idea. And uh, they're kind of going to want the same conditions that these pseudomagills or kind of rainbow fish or thread fins uh, would also want but what I want to show you is how these little stiphodons actually hang out you can see there's some coming up over the edge here and uh, that's a little neon uh, yellow stiphodon or neon gold and over here look at the size of this female these are the bird song, uh, is what they're named after, and they're named after a man named Ray Birdsong, who was a famous ichthyologist. But this female is absolutely huge. She is very large and in charge, whereas her male there is just hanging out next to her. And uh, they are doing uh, their kind of pre-spawning ritual in this tank and so it's fun to watch them swim around and do their thing um, here you can see we've got another female hanging out and kind of um, sunning herself almost now they're not in their bright red which usually the males when they're ready to spawn they'll turn a bright red color in this in this um, particular species uh, along their flanks but just look at the size of the females the females also have the rounded dorsal fin. All their fins are kind of a little rounded. Even their um, caudal fin or their back fin is a little rounded. And um, they they will turn a little bit um, rusty colored on the line down their side, these ones. But they then can turn all the way to almost this color, like a cherry, um, a cherry uh, shrimp red. But that only happens for usually a few hours uh, right around when they're going to spawn. Uh, so here we can see we've got more males sneaking up in, in the mix right here, hanging out. And he's actually starting to get some red flushing. He's got a little turquoise mark right behind the eye too. But he's starting to get some red flushing going on in his cheeks. And the sad part is that they can't reproduce in this fresh water it's just this fresh water is uh, there's not enough food in it to support their their fry or their babies which actually the females and here's another species altogether again coming in you can see them side by side males from two different species there's the bird song and then there's the uh, neon gold one right here you can see the gold on the back and uh, look at their mouths they can actually jut them out so that they can use them to suck the algae and biofilm, almost comb it off of any surface at, at pretty much any angle and any, any surface texture style too. But they can't reproduce without marine salt water. And that is how they would reproduce in the wild. So this swollen female look at her here this is her nest she actually has dug out a nest and they do that in your tank they'll dig out these nests and they hang out here and then they'll come out and they'll essentially sun themselves on these rocks and this is the middle of the night but for some reason that's when if i have the lights on they, they tend to do this most reliably especially after a big meal of protein i gave them some uh some uh, Daphnia 
frozen Daphne last night, uh, or, or I should say earlier this evening. Uh, and also you can see the pseudomagills are all colored up a nice orange, almost into the red tones if you see them from the right angle uh, up here. And, and there's still some debris of food in the water, but again, we can see that female poking out from behind and how swollen she is with eggs. And so she is just full of eggs, and they're such peaceful, nice fish. Uh, the Stiphodon gobies, all 30 to 40 that we have in the hobby, are a really peaceful critter. And, uh, you know, you need to have the water turning over probably 5 to 10 times an hour, ideally. And, again, I know it's hard to show you guys the filming through this biofilm and algae that's on the, the surface here. But this is all grazing area for them so that they can get this big. Um, a lot of people have shown me their stiphodon, and I haven't seen anybody have these uh, big swollen females like this. And I think it's really due to the grazing space as well as the, uh, the low TDS water, which is also just luck of the draw here in Seattle. Otherwise, you'd need to be using RO water or something like that. But you can just see that she is perched and, and showing off there. And she is just getting big. It's just a very uh, full female there. And there's other ones back in the brush over there. There's some that will hang out a little bit higher on perches. But generally, they'll all come out of these cracks and crevices and they all have little burrows in in between here too and they'll come out and then especially if it's natural light rather than tank light that's when they'll really color up with those reds and the males will make a pass at them then what happens uh, from what I've witnessed so far of these bird song uh, gobies is they will uh, meet with the males and the two of them will kind of twirl up together. There's another female and a male kind of uh, paired up. Uh, they will meet up and uh, they will twist up together so that the back part of their belly is touching the back part of one another's bellies. And just for a moment kind of swim together. And then uh, all of a sudden there'll be a little cloud released and that will be the milt and egg and unfortunately they can't reproduce in this water condition because uh, there's no food for them there's no plankton floating in the water now there are there is freshwater plankton I should say but there there's not the right mixture of plankton that they would be eating out in a marine environment which is what they've evolved to eat and their babies are born extremely small they're larval babies which we often say in the fish world for underdeveloped small little fish but in this case we mean almost unicellular <laughs> they're not quite because um they have obviously both mom and dad's uh genetics in them but near the size of some other creatures in the in their ecosystem that are singular celled organisms and then they go out and they they act just as plankton basically they eat plankton they float as plankton and they can travel up to 700 or 800 miles that's over a thousand kilometers and then they will go back to an island and depending on the species they may swim all the way back to the island that they came from after just going with the the drifting of the water or they may go all the way to a different island and then they'll have babies there and then those babies uh when they go out to sea after the the parents go up the freshwater creek once they've developed and they spawn up there those babies will then get washed out and they'll return to the stream where the original uh, grandmother or, or I guess the generation before rather would have spawned. So it's almost like an alternating spawning ground that shifts every, every other generation. 
um, in some cases they've found. So sometimes they're gone for two or three years, and then there'll be a big, you know, thousands of them returning to a small river in Indonesia or um, somewhere near, uh, there's that big female. And she's even starting to show a little bit of the red on the side there, a little bit of it on the back by her tail, you can see it. Um, starting to starting to fill in and here we have a little Borneo um, spotted um, hill stream loach so I just you know just figured I'd tell you what that was while I was showing you the other thing that we passed briefly was the the Burmese yellow catfish and uh, it's a yellow uh, micro catfish and this is a relatively new to the hobby species but very interesting, and so far this is uh, appears to be the full-grown size. So, if you guys know more about this species, I would love to hear it. Um, I really enjoyed them. And these are mostly Southeast Asian, Papua New Guinea, uh, and the uh, uh, Malaysia and Indonesian islands. Other than this, that Sultan Pleco back there is, uh, is not. But... You can see the little burrows they dig, that the stiphodons dig in there. And then these are the algae grazers, this little guy who's hopping around like crazy tonight. And then he's trying to get the attention of the females by doing that. Whereas normally they're a little more subdued. He's clearly seeing that the females are ready, and so he's ready too. But there's also another goby that we have in here, and that's the schismato goby. And it's got these dragon eyes, and that's why they call it the micro dragon. Uh, the Taiwanese or Indonesian micro dragon, depending on the species. And you can see there's another one back there, but there's one right here hidden underneath the sand. And they're just waiting for some little tasty uh, morsel, like a seed shrimp or a little Daphnia or a little sea monkey type critter to swim by and then they'll strike um, we can see if we can get it to strike real quick and uh, and and we'll close the video with with on that note so thanks for watching guys I hope that you enjoyed this tank I know that it, it looks like oh man it's full of algae it's full of uh, junk on the sides of the the walls of the tank but if you look you can see that the snails that are in here they're are only very few of them and so there is not an overabundance of biomass in here it, what it is it's I really leave the light on about 16 hours to 18 hours a day and it's a very weak light for the most part and it grows this algae pretty well uh, in in the frequencies that this lights found in so let's take a minute here Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, uh, I'd love it if you could hit that thumbs up. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to come back, see more species, see more of the fish room and, and all the, the quirks in it and the history that built up to how we got these fish in the hobby, uh, hit that bell notification, too. I know it's easy to forget. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you later and leave you with these guys striking as we go all right so we've got this guy blending in perfectly scuds in the turkey base there we'll see if we can elicit a response from him there's a scud right there boom he got it we'll see if we can get another response they're usually pretty back to back with their attacks so here we go here it comes let's see a lot of debris in there too, kind of confused him. But a very cool Schismatia gobis, gobius amapluvialunculus. <laughs> amapluvialosis? Uh, I don't know where I got the lunculus. Just sounded like uh, more high tech. The high tech, the, the transformer of gobies. Uh, no, it's Schismatia gobi gobius amapluvulosis, I believe, uh, and, uh, that's him there, so I figured we'd end with a little shot of him eating, and, uh, a parting shot of these guys, which I will be featured very soon, uh, these interesting catfish. Alright guys, take it easy, and I'll talk to you later, have a good one, bye.